It's another edition of Time About the Movies. We're looking at the movies from February 15th, 1991. And uh, let's get right to it. Let's start with the biggest new release of the weekend. The film that would eventually become the year's Best Picture winner at the Academy Awards. Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins in The Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, and yet another year where the Best Picture winner really wasn't the overall Best Picture of 1991, but... Uh, now, don't get me wrong. Signs of the Lambs is a really good movie. It, it benefits from both Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins' brilliant performance as Hannibal Lecter, and it is a very good thriller. But in a year where you had other movies like JFK, The Fisher King, Beauty and the Beast, these movies I think would have been much better winners of the Best Picture Award... Silence of the Lambs really is, I don't know, it's not Best Picture worthy, at least Best Picture worthy, at least to me it isn't, but, but, um, yeah, Silence of the Lambs is a really good movie, it's a very intense thriller, it benefits from the great performances by Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins, you have a great villain in Buffalo Bill, played by, played by Ted Levine, who's really good in this, Scott Glenn's also in here, Charles Napier, Cassie Lemons, Anthony Held, just a great cast overall, the, the atmosphere is so gritty and v tense all around. The thriller aspects are very good here. The performances are great. The writing is very well done. The direction by Jonathan Demme is very good. It is a solid movie. It's a good movie overall. Like I said, I like the movie a lot. I don't think it's the best picture of the year just like I had with Dances with Wolves and Driving Miss Daisy, but I still like those movies. I still like this movie a lot. I mean, yeah, a better movie I wish could have won best picture at the Oscars that year, but like I said, it's not the wor it's not the worst thing ever. It's not it's far from the worst thing ever. It's a really good movie, and if you haven't seen Silence of the Lambs all already, my God, get off and go see it, man. So uh, anyway, let's get on to the next movie, and that is John Goodman in the comedy King Ralph, from the director of Major League. So as I said, this was directed by David S. Ward, who last did Major League, which was a very funny movie. King Ralph, not so much. I mean, it's it's just not a good movie. I like John Goodman in here. I like Peter O'Toole. I like John Hurt. But the movie overall, it doesn't really get those laughs that I think they really wanted to get for it. I mean, this is a story that, they, that had to be turned into a comedy after it was based off of a story on this novel Headlong by Emmeline Williams, which is, I guess, more of a dramatic role, but... They had to change for a comedy all around, and it had to go to John Goodman to kind of expand his his acting abilities after his, after his TV success with Roseanne. He had been in Arachnophobia the year before. He was a great character actor up until he was on Roseanne, and so I guess this is them trying to branch him out as a big comedy star, and he could be a really funny guy. He, he was great on Roseanne. He's been in great, great in other movies, but I mean, here, it's not his fault that the movie is not that good. It's the writing, really. I mean, like you, you want they they set King they set this guy Ralph up as this guy as an Uncle Buck type of guy. Like he he has a nice heart to him, but he always does these silly, ridiculous th things that make make him an outcast. But there's a big difference between do, what Uncle Buck did and what this movie does. Like you don't really get the sense that it's like you can't really get the sleazebag sens sensibility to John Goodman's character if he's not acting like a sleazebag in the movie. I mean, most of the movie, he is acting like the nice guy. He's a, he's a cuddly nice guy, but that's not what the movie is trying to do, set him up as. Like, he, they're trying to set this guy up as this dirtbag, sleazeball, like, all the, like, rambunctious John Belushi, Jim belushi s type of person, and the movie doesn't really good doesn't really do a good job of showing that. That's one of the biggest problems the movie has to it is that it plays it a little too safe. But yeah, it it plays it way too safe. I should I should say that instead. But it does play it way too safe. Like I think they tried to say, make a safe and marketable comedy, and it just didn't work all around. It's a movie that I think had a right had a good idea to it, had a good cast to work with, had a decent director to work with. I think it just needed another rewrite to really amp it up a little bit, but that's my, that's my thoughts on King Ralph. Not a very good movie, unfortunately, but I'll gladly take it over our next movie, which is Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase, Demi Moore, and John Candy in Nothing But Trouble. Yeah, that title, Nothing But Trouble, really... It's not just a, a title for a really bad movie, but it's 
perfectly describes the production hell that happened behind the scenes of this film. Uh, this was a movie that Robert K. Weiss, who was best known for his work with the Zucker Brothers, he produced this movie. He thought about developing the story after he saw the movie Hellraiser, but then they did a mo but then they sent it out to different people. They, Dan Aykroyd got involved. He sent it out to John Hughes, who wanted to do this, who was interested, but eventually turned it down because he wanted to direct his own scripts. And then John Landis looked at, disliked the script. He turned that down. So they had to get Dan Aykroyd to direct this movie and. As we've seen in the past, when you're an when you're an actor in a big movie like this, and you play both the actor and the com and the director in this, it's not always going to turn out well. And it's, fortunately, this turned out pretty pretty badly. They changed the title late in the production of the film. Even they changed. I think it was a uh, Valkenvania because that's the name of the town that they're in, or the mansion, I should say. But yeah, and the movie went over budget. It was like I think it was like five million over budget. It said, but. I mean, the movie just didn't work at all because it was trying to be another Beetlejuice. It was trying to be like a mix of, Hel I guess it was trying to be like a mix of both Hellraiser and Beetlejuice meets all these different horror franchises. I think at one point somebody said it was a cross between Psycho and Abbott and could still be Frankenstein, but then something like a, a version of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And that really messes up the whole thing because you can never, you never really got a sense of what they were trying to go for here. They were just trying to throw stuff at the wall, see if anything worked at all, and we were having that trend where they had the, well, everyone was trying to copy the success of Beetlejuice, and none of them really worked after Beetlejuice did. Not Drop Dead Fred, not Little Monsters, not, um, uh, can't remember the other one. There was another one I can't remember right now at the top of my head, but the movie just isn't all that good. It's a lazy movie, wasting all these great, talented people in here. Chevy Chase, Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, Demi Moore coming off of her success on Ghost. This was just a bad movie all around, and there was just no real motivation going into this movie when you look at the film itself. And, um, it's a mess. It's a mess all around, and I think Dan Aykroyd can direct a movie. I, th I say this to everybody, every actor who wants to direct a mo movie. You can direct a movie, but you gotta... Do Work, get a better script to work with. This script was just all over the place, and it just doesn't work at all. It's just, it's a mess of a movie all around. It's one of the worst movies of 1991, easily, and you can, and it, you can kind of see why from that trailer. It just, it just didn't work as a movie whatsoever, and uh, it's a shame because I really think that there could have been something here, but there just wasn't. So. With that said, on to the next movie, and that it's our last movie, actually, and that is Iron and Silk. So I guess Prestige Films was a brief subdivision of Miramax Films, and it probably didn't last very long because I can't think of any other movies that had the Prestige Films title underneath it, but... Uh, yeah, this is one of those films, and this is based off of a book by the actor in this movie, Mark Salz Salzman, who also co-wrote the script for the, also wrote the script for the film, and, um, I haven't seen the movie, so I can't really comment on it, but, um, I mean, it really doesn't look that bad. It looks like a fun little romantic comedy between these two people, and it does look like it could be a decent film. I mean, like I said, I can't really comment on it too much because I haven't seen the movie, but there's nothing here that makes me think that it's going to be a terrible, terrible movie. It's just not one that I'm really, really interested in checking out at this time. But maybe down the line I might check it out at some point. So, uh, yeah, that's Iron Silk. That's really all I got for you. So on that note, that leads us to the end of another edition of Time About the Movies. Next time around, we'll look at the last week of February, February 1991, which is the 22nd, which only has two comedies to look at. Uh, Bette Midler and Willie Allen in the comedy Scenes from a Mall, and also Kevin Bacon and Elizabeth Perkins in He Said, She Said. Now, judging by those two titles alone, which one do you think is going to be the better film? I think you might be pleasantly surprised. You'll find out the next time we meet, so thank you guys for watching, and as always, if you want to see more videos like this, check out the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another new episode. So thank you for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, and until then, as always, take care.